Hello? Hello, Alexander. How are you? Good, thank you. Hey guys. Hey Dimitri. Oh. So I started a conversation about trying to move the time of this meeting to Monday. I'm I was remembering that it kind of stalled. The, I take full responsibility for the uh, missing previous meeting. Unfortunately, at that time I was traveling, so couldn't have, couldn't have made it on time. So might have appeared as. No worries. So I, I think what I'd like to propose, let's meet today. And then moving forward, let's change this meeting to, um, let's see, Monday at um, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Oh, it's fine for next week, but I don't know if it's gonna be available for long term. Um, let's... What about, um, let me see. Um, about 11 Eastern. So if you. So you said 11? Yeah, 11 a.m. Eastern time on Mondays or every other Monday. Yeah, so same time as now. That works. All right. I will reach yeah, out. Should work. I'll reach out to Hyperledger folks and formally make that change. Um, so in two weeks, the meeting will be scheduled at that time. Um, I actually, wait a minute, will it be? Sure. Yeah, and then. Of course, I will be traveling and unable to attend any time during that week. Um, not that the meeting can't be held without me. I hope that it is. But just letting folks know I won't be there until the 10th of April. But I'll reach out to Hyperledger and get the calendar changed. Excellent. And hopefully that means Mike Lauder will be able to join us as well, because I think having him on the call will, will be beneficial. Okay. Um, it's, it's good to be able to talk to Mike. Actually, considering that we did have some interesting new developments to uh, so, so yeah and, and when he's yeah. able to be engaged he really is uh, in my opinion he is he is quite capable as a as an engineer so it would be i think it would be good for us to have him involved i appreciate it very much i enjoyed uh interactions on github brief as they were brief though they were so, speaking of them, um, I'm happy to say that um, the pull request, which bumps trivial dependencies for URSA, can be amended to accept a non vendor version of Dalek. My pull request into Dalek cryptography was merged. Oh, excellent. Um, 
This also means that the pull request, which was approved by Rai, but not by Mike, it can be amended to include other non-trivial dependencies, and we can use that as a starting off point. As a second step, after that is done, I'd like to have a look at problems with WebAssembly. One of our engineers um, said that there are there are some issues with compiling Ursa in WebAssembly. And I think that I might know what's causing that. I'll have to do some research, research unfortunately, but that will be my next step. Oh, that sounds brilliant. Afterwards, I plan to have a look at 226. Because while there are some tests in Ursa, they're not connected to any sort of pipeline. Correct. And I'd really like to be able to see the code coverage changes in the pull request summaries. I've done that for Iroha. I'll probably just need a uh, need a couple of hours to get that done, and maybe someone with uh, some experience of GitHub Actions to review. Um, I've added the roadmap in 223, as was requested. We had a discussion with Mike about the reorganization. Um, should we go through that now, or is it enough to keep it offline? Um, I think, um, I think the, the gist I've gotten is that there's general agreement on, on this as a roadmap mm -hmm. uh, and uh, failing anybody coming forward with really good reasons that it shouldn't be. I, I think we just continue moving forward with it. Okay. I've also added a GitHub project for this. So there's a primitive Kanban board. I don't know if anyone uses it. I only use it whenever there's a change to the status. And unfortunately, I didn't manage to do much else. The project that nearly got me to quit is very close to getting me to actually quit. So it's been a busy week, unfortunately. Can relate. <laughs> How did that okay, work so, out, please? Uh, sorry? Ah, never mind. Oh, just a silly joke. Uh, I like silly jokes. All right, so two, two, let's see, I clicked on the wrong button. Um, so 225, you said, is mm -hmm. well, have you made the change yet? Pointing to Dalek. Um, yes. So, as I said, with 225, I, I still have to make it today. Um, okay. okay. Vendor. Um, I, don't, I no longer need to vendor it. It should be usable as is. Okay. Um, as soon as you make, I'll try to pay attention as soon as you make that change. I, that was the only thing keeping me from clicking approve. Uh -huh. was, that, okay. was that outstanding question. So, um, I will keep an eye on it today and we should be able to get that in today. Good. Um, one more question. Um, what do you guys think about a pull request template? Most of them are ad hoc. I want to have some sections which are just um, posing open questions. What does this do? I like I like templates in theory. <laughs> I like the idea of templates. Um, okay. Yeah. Usually what I, and maybe this is something that we could overcome, but usually what I've seen happen is that what ends up being the th the pull request is all of the template text, none of it removed or changed, and then a couple of lines about that are just doing what is being done now. And I mean, we could be hard-nosed about it and say, you didn't follow the template. Yeah. Or, um, but I, I'm open. I'm open to it. I'm not going to stand in the way of it happening. I'm just. Okay. 
jaded, I guess. Okay, in that case, oh, what I'll do is I'll set a template which looks fine standalone. Maybe with some optional stuff, but yeah, um, I, it's not going to be as sophisticated as 225. Right. Um, any other recommendations about the CI? Because Ursa is used on many platforms, there's a good chance that some of the things which use low level instructions can compile on one architecture, but not on the other one, or fail on different architectures. I heard that Rai had um, a, an ARCH64 Mac OS and ARCH64 Linux runner on an M1 machine for Ares, which was usable for other projects. I'd like to add that to that pipeline. Maybe adding a WebAssembly test so that we know when that's broken. We can bisect and find what changes can fix that. In general, I want I want to improve the test coverage, but I want to do it without investing a lot of time directly. And in terms of coverage, also feature compatibility. There are a few tools called um, Cargo All Features and another one which was, I think it was called Hackery, which checks for different combinations of all features and says, oh, if you if you use this feature with a combina in combination with that feature, it was a compile error. Any objections to those things? Not for me, no. Okay. In that case, I'll get two to five mergeable. And I guess that's it. Um, what I think that we can actually, we can probably close a couple issues too. Now that we have a new issue for the roadmap, mm -hmm. uh, I was closing 151. Um, okay, let's, it is marked as potentially relevant. Should we just close it in favor of the um, actual roadmap, which is 223, right? 223, yes. Yeah. Excellent. Yep. Uh huh. That is done. Uh, we have another issue marked possibly irrelevant. Um, Loop ZMAX. ZMAX. This one is not as cut and dry for me right now. I'm not, I haven't been in Ursa land in a little while. I keep it open. Yeah, I agree. So we're sure that that's fixed. Um, we have quite a number of, um, sorry, I'm jumping away from possibly relevant. We should keep on that. Um, mm -hmm. 185. Uh, well, proof question. Yes. It's a documentation issue. Okay. So should we change the label from possibly relevant to documentation? Mm -hmm. I think we should keep it as possibly relevant because as far as I can understand, the, the reason why there's a problem is because the organization doesn't hint, doesn't put the user in the correct mindset to read the docs because there aren't any and it's a re-exported structure, but it doesn't have the documentation of the original thing. I think if we actually go through with 223, that might be invalidated. Okay. I have a comment to that effect actually, it might be useful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, 
193 cannot compile 0 0.3.7 in portable mode. Yeah. There's another one that as the roadmap gets implemented, this should become irrelevant. Yes. Okay, 195. 195, we export AAD. Um, hopefully, when the non trivial dependencies have been upgraded, that would also not be a problem. Yep. AAD has changed the API quite considerably, and many things which used to be easy to do um, are no longer actually even possible. So they used to have a generic constructor for all of the AAD types. Now there aren't any. And so the solution is either to implement all of them manually and to copy the code that was just removed, or which is the preferred solution to just not rely on it at all. And to tell people, OK, you have to patch these things into AAD. And when you get something out, it's the AAD type rather than the ERSA type. Sorry if I'm getting into too many details. Uh, no, that's fine. I think ending up with a solution that reduces the amount of, or the number of hoops that folks using URSA need to jump through to get it to work is uh, the best path forward. Fully agree. Okay. Um, Replace failure with this error anyhow. Um, made irrelevant. Part of two, two, three again. Yep. That is all the possibly irrelevance. Yep. Um, we have quite a number of bug and security label issues. Mm -hmm. which I'm not sure, I guess, I'm not sure how, I'm not sure if with the roadmap, how many of them are addressed by roadmap implementation versus how many need just somebody sitting down and deliberately fixing. Uh, okay, in that case, I'll give you a case study 209. Possible ED25519 Dalek issue. Yes, this one. Try to address this directly in the Dalek repo. And the PR sort of kind of addresses it, but it doesn't actually give me enough information to say that we've definitely fixed it. Because the issue isn't phrased as if, um, here's how you reproduce it. It's phrased as um, unsafe libs the library that is used by for signing ED25519 Dalek possibly contains a security bug. Possibly contains. Doesn't really tell you much how to reproduce it or how to verify that it's no longer there. And given that it has the security label, I'm not sure that anyone other than a security expert can really definitely say that we've addressed the security issue. From what I can understand, just upgrading Dalek is enough to say that we are safer. Safer doesn't actually mean that this is completely invalidated, but as far as I know, this is not a CVE. This is just a potential stack of the flow bug. And also the readme mentions that it is not likely using the, that Ursa using the unsafe library will also be unsafe. Which, come to think of it, we could just add unsafe decorations around the functions just to be safe. No pun intended. But this changes the API for no reason other than uh, communicating to the users that there might be an angle by which this could be, under some circumstances, incorrect. The Rust guidelines are very clear that this is not how you use unsafe. Unsafe is used specifically for cases where um, you are violating the borrow checker guarantees. Mm -hmm. And in, in that regard, we could just close this one. 
I didn't add the label of possibly irrelevant because I'm not qualified to say whether or not it's closed or not. So yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a tangled mess. Is this, I'm assuming not, but is this at all related to the recent Dalek 25519 conversation about scalar arithmetic and point multiplication and those mm -hmm. consistencies? Yes, exactly. The well, the basic rundown of it is because in some cases overflow is undefined behavior, although in Rust it clearly is not, it's defined behavior, it just crashes and it rounds, or in some cases it even just um, circles back. So just modular arithmetic. Because people didn't expect that to happen, they assume that this means it's undefined when actually it's just unexpected behavior. And again, I'm not a huge fan of floating point arithmetic anywhere near anything that requires precision, but apparently it works. What I did was just offer sort of a middle ground where things that are definitely not unsafe are definitely marked as not unsafe. And this is a simple guarantee. And things that could be unsafe, i.e. they could lead to um, borrow checker violations, which are already marked as unsafe, are given a comment to the effect of um, another person has looked at it and he said that it's fine. With unsafe, there's not much you can do beyond that. Mm -hmm. That PR got merged. We no longer need to vendor the library as a result, and we can use the latest version of it. Dalek is not that well maintained because one of the reasons why I originally had to do that was because they just have an outdated version of a library. And the last blocking issue in order to publish the newer version of Dalek, which was using the newer version of library, was blocked by this issue. So I'm in favor of keeping um, 209 open. And having someone who has a background in security having a look as i said i'm merely a humble engineer um 213 is something which was opened by one of our engineers very likely i'm going to close it by doing what we're doing in our you know our crypto library which is um, basically making sure that every algorithm, including SCCP 256K1, does the same thing, which is pad shorter um, seeds of bytes. I don't know if that's the correct approach, but this is definitely an approach that is used all throughout ESA, making it generic and making sure that it's possible to amend it from one place rather than from several places is probably a better solution, even if we need to change it later down the line. Um, about cross-compiling ERSA, this is not as much a bug as it is a build question. I didn't remove the bug um, label because I it can potentially be a bug. Mm -hmm. This was posted in September 2022. A lot of time has passed, and the person who originally posted this uh, probably doesn't, doesn't even have the same error message handy. So we can't really ask him to provide details into debug. Okay. But what they said was, according to the example of use of CL, I cross compile it with OpenWRT ARM successfully, but when I make it on my router, I'm at the segmentation fault, which sounds like they might be missing a dynamic library. If under these circumstances we replaced, if A, we could trigger the segmentation fault and B, we could uh, reroute the segmentation fault to produce a human readable error message which says, you're missing this library, then I think we could lose 214, sorry. The rest are enhancements. Um, 
and a lot of them are open by me. So 206, 207. I will fix those in 225 or 226. Oh, no, sorry, 226 is only taken in a follow-up to 225. Sounds good. This is excellent. Um, the last couple of questions I had, um, we've got, uh, we've got 225, obviously. Um, I don't, rem I'm not remembering if we had a determination on 217 and 220. I believe, I believe 220 is not necessary because of 225. Um, but then 217. I don't mind merging it first. It does have one approval from you. I could give it another go and see if there are any conflicts. Like I said, 225 needs to be amended anyway because because there are um, because the pull request into Dalek got merged and um, I have some more bandwidth to update more than just the trivial dependencies. That means, in theory, we could merge this one right away. And this was open January 17th. It's quite a long there. Um, 20 to 20. Um, I think we can just close this one. I mean, um, we could just, we could technically rebase it and then merge it. Uh, right. But if it's being, if it's already being fixed by 225, I don't think. It doesn't hurt. From the point of view of statistics, I still need to make some changes anyway. Um, it does for me. It's easier to deal with conflicts than it is to deal with outstanding pull request. Okay. And two seventeen again needs to be rebased. Thank God, GitHub added that button. Yes. Used to be a nightmare. Um, okay, so from ah, uh, okay, they have get random added. Okay. Yeah, not something I can review quickly. If you, if as you review it and you feel it's acceptable, feel free to merge. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then the last one to look at is two twenty eight, which I looked at and it seemed fine, but um, no, obviously other reviewers. Um, I I think that this may be might be a bit of an X Y problem. Okay. So let's have a look at revocation registry. Revocation registry just is a new type struct, and that's it. These cases. You're not supposed to make the inner type public. You're supposed to add an accessor method. Okay. The reason why that's the preferred solution is because we have OOP, we have encapsulation, and that no, music. But it, so, yeah. So um, what I would recommend doing here is not closing this pull request, but actually asking Blueberry with the three um, why exactly they want to do it. They, this is required for an on creds RS as we use a different name for the key spec. Making it public makes sure we can we can we can just rename it easily. This does not create a breaking change. You know what? I think I think it's a single line. I just gave you why I might have apprehensions, but I think it's easier to do it. To make it public now, I gave it my approval. I'll merge it as soon as it's ready. Okay. Yeah, it's done. 
So we only have 225 and 217 outstanding. 217 I'm going to review, and 225 is going to be updated and ready for review soon. Um, should I get in touch with you via Discord? Or just uh, get close enough? Uh, it's actually more likely that I'll notice it through GitHub than Discord. So, um, OK, I'll do that then. Sounds good. Excellent. Do we have anything else to talk about today? Not from my side. All right. Then I will um, I will make sure that we get the meeting time changed. Um, I won't see anyone in two weeks. Um, I'll be at the IETF meetings and otherwise engaged. But in four weeks, I, I'll see everybody um, on Monday. Sounds good. Thank you very much for the work. Cheers. Thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye. Goodbye.